I've known George as a youngster, and uh, I've known his parents, and uh, I just like to fight game myself as an individual because I participated a little bit as an amateur in my younger day, and coming in the same district, or being in the same district as George was born, it was a type of a district that you had to protect yourself to a certain degree. This is Toronto, yes, of course, Toronto. The West End, off DuPont Street, the old Royce Avenue. Um, when George became an amateur boxer, and uh, with his background, I felt right there and then that with his education that he had, and he had good education, I think he even went further than I did or he, in school, and I felt that if he made it his choice to become a boxer or a fighter, he was going to do good at it. Irv Ungerman speaking, George Tuvalo's manager. Going along various times, and uh, I figured with his body and with his power punching that he had, he sure had the makings of a champ. And five, six years back, at that time, I uh, predicted George should have had some... Uh, without degrading his manager or his trainer at that time, I just felt that if he intended to stay in it, he should have had a little more uh, scope as far as management and trainer was concerned in getting him into the highlight of the sport. At the age of 10, we moved to that house in Gillespie. And, uh, life was a little different there. And, uh, when I lived on Hook Avenue, which was in the junction, life was pretty rough. Uh, I thought you were a pretty skinny kid till about 14. I remember one time it was my first year of high school, a guy looked down at my arms. He was, it was in Latin class. I remember he looked back at me and I had just kind of break my arm back. I was going to talk to him. He said, boy, you got a skinny, awfully skinny bicep. I think that's what motivated me into starting doing a lot of push-ups and chin-ups and so on. I went to the Y and I started lifting a few weights. I think that's what built me up. I think from the age uh, 14 to 15, the first year, I really started to get excited about uh, bodybuilding. I think I gained about 70 pounds. I made tremendous strides. Ever since I was a little kid, I always entertained the thought of being a fighter. First time I can remember really thinking about being a fighter, I think it was when uh, they used to have these Wheaties. I remember, I, I think it was Lloyd Purse where somebody had a, a couple of articles on fighters in them and you're talking about how to faint and uh, with your left hand and jab to the head or something like that. And there, ever since then, I, I started fooling around with it and uh, I had my mother buy me a, pie, a pair of gloves and a set of gloves rather. And we, I'd start fooling around the streets with them. And I think ever since then, I sort of fashioned myself as a young Joe horse or something. The main uh, strategy that we try to impress in our own minds is the confidence. And confidence has been a great thing in George's mind lately because of the fact that when we went into the Doug Jones fight, we naturally were a two and a half to one underdog. And uh, we never once let it bother us because we knew that it was a, mis, uh, a mispriced sort of a, a bet, uh, odd, so to speak. When we were in New York, we went out that same afternoon prior to the fight. We had some tremendous big stakes. And at that time, we arranged for a party that evening with champagne and a big cake with the inscription, it's only the beginning. And George looked at me and uh, his trainer, and they made remarks. Gee, Irv, you're, not, you're taking everything for granted. And I said, this is the only way. There is no other way. We've, it's the only attitude to go ahead. We wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be fighting if we thought for one minute that we couldn't beat this uh, Doug Jones. And this is the attitude that we have to carry on with. We accepted this Floyd Patterson fight. We have the same attitude in this particular fight as we had with that one. And we're definitely going to come out on top. And this is the stand that we're taking. It's a fantastic feeling. You actually don't feel as much as a fighter as a gladiator. Uh, <laughs> I really feel like a gladder in the old days in a Coliseum, I think. That, I mean, especially when there's 19,000 people in an arena. It's a tremendous feeling. I'll come to see you another time. It's tremendous. <laughs> sometimes you might feel like Christian, other times you might feel like a lion. I, rather, I think I'd rather be a lion, though. <laughs> and I've mentioned to George so many different times that he's so close to becoming a millionaire. It's a matter of minutes. It could mean... One minute, it could be three or 15 or 25 minutes. This is all it takes for George to become a millionaire. His next two or three fights may not uh, total more than, we'll, we'll exaggerate, to 60 minutes. And this man can become the world's champion and a millionaire with it. Now we break it. We break it. Break it. Now we break it. We break it. Break it! <laughs> 
I'm out of there somehow. Hey, hey, get him. Where you keep going? Stay there. Where are you here? Look at it. Kill. Fine. Hey, David, back up. in a small, very small little type of a bungalow. He lives in a district that isn't the very best because of his financial uh, situation. And all around, I, I just really feel that here is a boy that would make a tremendous champion as an individual, family man and whatnot that goes along with it. And uh, with his children today, they just jump all over him. You'd think that with four children, the, size, the ages that he'd have, Possibly they would get on the individual's nerves, but not with George. The more they push him around, the more they jump on him, the more he loves it. And he loves his wife, and he lives very modest. He's not a type of fellow that wants to go out and buy a big car when he can't afford it. That's actually the first book I've read about him, and it's more just like a Bible. And his views on everything, on love, on children, on sorrow, and it's quite a book. How's the kids? Oh, everything's all right. Yeah. Well, we had a charter bus. And it's pretty rough. I feel kind of dragged out right now. So listen, uh, you call my mother after uh, you know my phone. Tell her everything's okay. Your mind is almost a blank, except one thing. You have to get this fellow out of there. You know? It's uh, it, a lot of times I'd say to myself before the fight, I'd say, boy, in between rounds when I fight, I, if I can only think of what I'm fighting for, although you really know in the back of your mind what you're fighting for, but you're always looking for something, for a little extra boost if you can possibly get out of yourself. I think we should give the champ, the next champ, a big send off because that's exactly what it's going to be. Not only a speech, but it's more than that. Make sure it comes over. Ladies and gentlemen, let's wish George the very best and give him a happy country send-off. All of us. Good luck, George. Yeah. I just like to say on behalf of my manager, trainer, and my sparring partners that uh, we've really enjoyed ourselves mentioning in the last three weeks. And uh, the people have just been great, the guests and the, the waiters and everybody on the staff treated us beautifully. And uh, I couldn't think of a better place to come back to and train for the catcher's clay fight after I beat Patterson. Thank, Thank you, Chad! Just a tremendous moment, you know. Everybody, everybody around, accustomed around, and all, you know, pictures being taken every half a second, people screaming, shouting, the way they announce your weight, like you're at it. was like an auction, in a sense of my uh, Chevalo 208, and Patterson 197 and a quarter. And it's like when they were bidding on us or something, you know. They Chevalo turn around, Patterson turn this way, that way. It was pretty fantastic. I got it. I really got a tremendous throw out of it. I'll never really forget it.
I believe he'll be a very modest. The first thing he would do would take care of his parents. Next, of course, would be his wife and family. George's wife is a very clever girl. A lot of credit's got to be given to this young girl because uh, it's not all honey, so to speak, when a fighter comes home all sweated up and soiled clothing every day uh, and certain diet, up early in the morning and uh, no definite income, the fear of always getting hurt, the children seeing their father uh, one day possibly with some cuts or marks on them. And uh, I, I'd imagine that she should be given a lot of uh, consideration in the fact that she's really a devoted wife. Telescope returns to the object of Mrs. Chuvalo's devotion in just a moment. 